Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, prepare to be shocked and amazed by the glory that is XCOM Enemy Unknown. Others before me have done XCOM Let's Plays, but you have never seen one like this before. Why? Because this is the only one done by Splice himself. I will be playing the game on the classic difficulty setting, with Iron Man mode on. Iron Man mode is the best way to play this game, because it means you only get one save file, and you can never really go back, because it autosaves after each turn. It transforms a Nintendo hard game into a game that's just almost purely spiteful. I really don't know what a psychologist would say about me, seeing as I feel this is the only true way to appreciate this game. Psychosis? Psychosi? Plural of psychosis aside, let's get started. With splice strategies now underway, let me explain where my soldiers' names will be coming from. I have modded the game so that all the names come from Quark, my college sci-fi fantasy club. So when soldiers die in this game, it's not just some random dude from Mozambique, it's someone I, in theory, know and love. This is why I'm an awesome friend. Oh yeah, this thing just fell from the sky, was burning up, is glowing green, and you wanted to touch it. That guy was a Darwin Award candidate if I've ever seen one. Natural selection at its finest, for sure. So now everyone's wrapped up like a green burrito and the aliens are ready to take them off for abduction and probing. Have fun, guys! In the meantime, I have to have a meeting with Lex Luthor here. Hello, Commander. Hello, President Luthor. In light of the recent extraterrestrial incursion, this Council of Nations has convened to approve the activation of the XCOM project. Seems legit. You have been chosen to lead this initiative. Sounds like the hiring process you wasn't selective our enough. First and last line of defense. Humanity's in trouble Your then. Efforts will have considerable influence on this planet's future. Kind of goes without saying. We urge you to keep that in mind as you proceed. And cue up the dramatic chords. music. Good luck, Commander. Heavens knows we're gonna need it. Let's get started, shall we? We need to pick our starting location. Normally, I pick Asia, because 50% cheaper officer research is a really awesome thing. But this time, in order to just switch it up a little bit, I'm going with XCOM Africa and seeing what just straight bonus money does. Enough messing around. Let's get to work on Operation Lawful Rush. So apparently, it's absolutely critical to the aliens' plans to take control of this gas station in the middle of Cairo. These are the tacticians we've been losing to so far, people. So let's take a moment and meet the team. We have Beetober, DJ Sucre, Maddie, and Sir Meta rounding out the bunch. Let's hope for their sakes they have a long, prosperous time on the team. For those unaware of the mechanics of XCOM, this is just a normal abduction mission. In an abduction mission, the goal is simply to kill all the aliens. Aliens typically run together in small groups of two or three. Until the aliens have seen you though, the aliens cannot fire. Once they've seen you though, they will immediately seek cover without firing upon you. For this reason, it makes sense to walk along the wall as one solid group, staying near enough to the wall that you won't accidentally trigger any groups that are far away, but staying close enough to cover so that if aliens do walk into your group, you'll be able to retreat to the safety of hard cover. And wouldn't you know it, it's not long before we have visitors. Unfortunately for the aliens, we don't take too kindly to uninvited guests. Four shots and only one connects. Yeah, that, that sounds about right for XCOM. But DJ Sucre did kill the first alien of the campaign, and thus he wins the Will Smith Welcome to Earth Award. Good job, Sucre. So the trick here is, while there is a lot of heavy cover, there isn't a lot of heavy cover that offers firing lanes towards the aliens. What heavy cover there is is also problematic. This gas tanker I'm moving Maddie and Beto Burr up to, while providing full cover, is also very explosive, and thus an issue. DJ Sucre, already having gotten one kill, I'll use both his moves to get him up to the supply closet, thus putting him in good position to be able to get up to the roof next turn. With the other three in position, I move Sir Meta up to the truck. Sir Meta is going to be the anchor that keeps the aliens in place. I'll put Sir Meta into Overwatch while putting Beto Burr and Maddie into Hunker Down. Hunker Down will make them harder to hit, and thus the aliens will be less likely to actually take a shot at them and indirectly hit the gas tank. 
As predicted, the alien shot at Sir Meta instead of Beedo Bear and Matty. Unfortunately, the other went into Overwatch, making it so that we can't advance. We'll have to kill that alien to improve our positioning, but that'll be difficult as no one has a good shot at him. Luckily for us, there's a solution. Military grade explosives plus pinpoint grenade throw control can solve a lot of problems. to instruct your men to exercise restraint when using explosives. While certainly effective at killing aliens, they also destroy the artifacts we're hoping to recover from the bodies. Just something to consider. This is a war zone, not an archaeological dig. Don't tell me how to fight. Okay, so I don't see this alien going into Overwatch, which could mean we could bull rush him, but there might be other aliens inside the store, and we don't want to trigger them before this one's already dead. So we move Beedo Burr up and have him take a 50% shot. He missed, but that's the way the cookie crumbles whenever you're reduced to a coin flip. I could have Maddie come up to the other side of the door, but unfortunately that could end up revealing aliens if there are more inside. So instead, I will have her go here and set up overwatches so that the alien is discouraged from bum rushing Vito. Outnumbered 4 to 1, the alien makes the wise decision to run. This gas station wasn't worth it anyway. Unfortunately for him, while he can run and hide, he isn't allowed to leave the map, so he's going to have to die at some point. Beetleborough will stay ground level and watch those two doors, whereas the rest of the team will go to the roof, where they can easily drop down and flank any alien that decides to show up. Now that we're set up and in position, we can wait to see what the aliens will do. Apparently I was too quick to compliment that one alien, because he decided that yes, this gas station is worth dying for. And just his luck, Beetleborough is more than willing to oblige. And with that, everyone on the team but Sir Meta has a kill, and the first pack of aliens is dead. With the first pack gone, it's now time to search for the rest of the aliens' elite gas station defense team. As I have yet to see any evidence of them, I assume that they're somewhere in this Burger King annex. So I move my soldiers accordingly, and of course it turns out they're somewhere back here. I don't know how they were able to get moving back there without me noticing, but then again, they are really small. Now comes the task of reorienting the team. I think the aliens are still more likely inside this building, so I want to have every single possible exit for them covered before I reveal myself. With all sides covered, I now think it's time to have Beedober say hi. So Beedober catches them trying to steal a couple sodas, and they scurry to cover trying to pretend like they weren't up to anything at all. The plan is simple. The aliens can still only see Beedo Burr, so we'll have Beedo Burr retreat back into the Burger King Annex, where he'll be safe from the aliens because they'll have to move at least twice before they can shoot at him. The aliens will over-pursue, thus leaving Sir Meta a great attack from behind, and DJ Sucre an attack from the side, with Matty being Beedo Burr's cover from the right. And, sure enough, one of the aliens uses two moves to get up in position to fight Beedo Burr. Confident they've now overextended, I'm ready to drop Sir Meta down behind them for a great flanky- Oh no! Please don't kill him, 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 please don't kill him! Please don't kill him. Oh. Okay, whew! Okay, he's not dead. We'll be just fine as long as we- Oh no, oh no, not again, not again, not again, not again, not again, not again, not again. Oh, jeez! So Sir Meta is now on the brink of death with two aliens behind him. What happened here? The first mistake was I assumed I'd know what the aliens would do, rather than confirming what the aliens would do. Secondly, as you can see here, I did consider dropping him down into this little corner, but for whatever reason, I wasn't allowed to drop him there. That should have been a hint to me that there was an alien, but for whatever reason, I ignored that and just considered it a pathing glitch. So now we gotta figure out what to do to keep Sir Meta alive. First thing we have to do is figure out if we're gonna run or shoot this alien right next to Sir Meta. There's really nowhere Sir Meta can run where he'll be safe, so we'll have him take a shot in its giant, bulbous, freakish head. With that out of the way, it's time to deal with the other alien. This is, unfortunately, where I make two key mistakes. My first mistake was noticing that this door frame sorta has a door in it. I can't state why, but for some reason, I just simply forgot that there was a door there. A door right freaking there. 
The next mistake is I just simply forget that DJ Sucre still has a grenade available. Grenades are pinpoint accurate and do 3 damage, thus would kill this alien. But for some reason, I forget this and just simply put DJ Sucre into Overwatch. Before I can make any other poor decisions though, Beetle Bird's gotta clean up a mess in the kitchen. With the alien in the kitchen dead, I'm now free to use Maddie to try and save Sir Meta. Unfortunately, there's really no spot where she can move to get line of sight to the alien. So I drop her down to this door, put her in overwatch, and pray the alien gets too aggressive and triggers a reaction shot. Unfortunately, the alien isn't dumb enough for this, and now I can only hope and pray he misses Sir Meta. And the hope and pray strategy works about as well as you'd expect. And because of my incompetence, Sir Meta gets to die in extremely dignified fashion. I mean, listen to this gurgle. Choking on your own blood. Definitely not the way you want to go out. Sorry, Sir Meta. You definitely deserved better. So now, we are on a quest for revenge. And DJ Sucre is out for blood. My name is DJ Sucre. You killed my teammate. Prepare to die. Later. So, Sucre ended up doing minimum damage, which means he's now in trouble should the alien bum rush him. So, we move Beedober and Maddie up, put them into Overwatch, and pray one of them finishes the job. When you need clutch shooting, you can't beat Beedober. And with those bullets, Migration Lawful Rush is complete. Though we did lose a soldier, victory is victory. And there's a job to be done. So, we load up into the Sky Ranger, put Operation Lawful Rush behind us, and fly on home. Now that we're home, it's on to the logistics of war. Welcome to XCOM HQ, Commander. Hello. I'm Central Officer Bradford. Yeah, 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 good for you. Come on, let's figure out these promotions. Of course, our most reliable shot, Beedober, ends up as our sniper. Maddie, whose only kill came with a grenade, is going to be an assault and given a shotgun. And DJ Sucre becomes a support for reasons. One more thing I like to do for style is my soldiers have no first names. They earn their first names by getting kills. Their first name is simply a serial number. DJ Sucre for getting the first kill is 01, Maddie for getting the second kill with the grenade, 02, and Beedober, 03. Before he met his gurgly death, Sir Meta did record a kill, and thus he remains 04 in our hearts. For those wondering why you saw all those names blacked out on the soldier list, I like to keep it a surprise if you get selected as a soldier, because I'm fun like that. With that out of the way though, it's time to get on to research. Hello, Commander. My name is Dr. Farland. I yeah, I know who you are. Yes. You're the one who nags this at me whenever I treat war like it's not an archaeological dig. So we have three opening research options. Option one, xenobiology. Xenobiology is useful for capturing aliens, doing autopsies, and getting technology from the aliens. Weapons fragments is the path that we take to get to cooler weapons, and alien materials is what we do to improve our armor. Now, any of these three would be a good choice, but I find I'd rather kill aliens quicker than I would like to capture them, and plus, by the time I'm capturing aliens, I would like to have the South America bonus of We Have Ways to make autopsies and interrogations instant. For that reason, I'm going with Weapon Fragments. Commander, I realize our troops have to put their own survival first, but... Every alien we use explosives against is one less Oh my goodness, are you still complaining about the grenades? That's it, I'm going to engineering where I don't have to hear people whine at me. Ah, Commander. I was wondering when you'd be stopping by. Welcome to engineering. Couldn't get here soon enough. Oh, you have the latest 3D printers and everything. This is going to be awesome. So biggest no-brainer we'll ever make is giving DJ Sucre a med pack to use. We could then follow that up by building a satellite, which is needed to keep panic down in other countries and increase your funding. But all that matters is the end of the month, so it makes more sense to wait until we can get some engineers, lower the cost of production, and then make the satellite. There's really nothing at the moment we can do as far as base building to improve our setup other than start some excavation. After that, it's on to scanning the planet for trouble. And 
just five days later, the aliens are ready to abduct people. Several different cities are offering us rewards for their help and we've got some decisions to make. Sapporo is willing to give us the latest in Japanese engineering. Port Said will give us some Egyptian scientists. And France is just trying to buy our support. Not a bad strategy. At this stage in the game though, there's really no question of who I'm going to pick. You need engineers to build more buildings and advance the plot. So it's off to Japan to help them out with their alien infestation. With Sir Meta dead, we need to add one more soldier to our group. And I have a standing policy that if I can help it, I try and have even boys and girls on the team. XCOM is an equal opportunity employer. So we remove our male mystery player from the team and invite evil Emi-san to join the party. Now that we have our team in place, it's time to accessorize. I have the Elite Soldier Pack, which allows you to much further customize your soldiers. So my standing policy is, once you get a promotion and are in a mission, you get customized. Before we start playing dress up though, we give DJ Sucre his med pack, just to make sure that we can stay healthy on this trip to the danger zone. After that, there's really no question what we're going to make DJ Sucre look like. We give him his hat and make him green just like his homeboy Luigi. With Beedober, I make him his favorite color, red, and give him one of the cooler helmets in the game. He's going to be sniping in style. With Maddie, I make a mistake, because she reminds me a lot of Princess Peach, given the fact she plays it so much in Y Smash League, but I always forget that she plays Princess Daisy, so I go with pink when I should have gone with yellow. My mistake. To make up for it though, we give her one of the other cooler helmets in the game. With all my toy soldiers set up, it's time to send them off to war. Join us next time for the awesomely named Operation Vorpal Metal. Until then, I'm Splice, and thanks for watching.